And with me in studio is Professor Noah Midamba. He's a defense and a foreign policy expert, senior associate of Global Center and Policy Strategy. So we'll just be having that conversation in just a bit. Now, 20 people died after a boat capsized on Lake Victoria from the Uganda Lake Shores. Details of this tragic incident in our international news roundup. In Uganda, around 20 people have lost their lives after their boat capsized on Lake Victoria. Local authorities report that nine people were rescued and emergency workers are on the lookout for more survivors. Apart from the passengers, the boat was said to be transporting charcoal, fresh food and fish before the incident occurred in the early hours. According to police, the accident is attributed to overloading and bad weather. In Niger, the military ruling group is urging citizens in Yemen to fight for the country's freedom and push back against foreign interference from countries like France. Speaking to media, Mahaman Sanusi, the interim coordinator for the M62 civil society group leading the protest against foreign interference, said they wanted immediate departure of foreign forces and were against any kind of threat to continue the struggle for the independence of the people. Democratically elected President Mohamed Bazoum was ousted by the Presidential Guard last week. Finally, Israel Defense Ministry has announced that the United States has agreed the sale of a co-developed missile defense system to Finland. The ministry went on to explain that having received the green light from Washington. Um, the ousted leader, the president at the time, that was Mohamed Bazoum, he had written an article on the Washington Post, urging the U.S. and international community try to restore constitutional order in that particular country. What has been your thoughts so far? For dear, let's uh, begin from exactly where you are uh, talking about, mm -hmm. uh, and that is the global environment. Mm -hmm. And then how can we then sustain stability and peace around the world? Um, the global environment which really has led to the coup. Let's raise three questions. Mm -hmm. uh, the second question, what are the, how does the colonial legacy um, that has led to, uh, to some really uh, unsustainable uh, countries, particularly in Sahel, mm -hmm. and also Francophone, uh, former Francophone countries? And then what is the stake for Africa? Um, these are the big questions. Right. Uh, let's look at, you know, the, in terms of capacity, uh, uh, economic capacity uh, to solve a um, uh, global problem, global war. Uh, there's prediction uh, that by 2050, China will uh, have a bigger economy than the United States, right. and that India will increase to maybe number two. But Bearing this statistic, I, I have very, very serious doubt mm -hmm. about those projections. Uh, because combined U.S. and Europe, uh, in terms of their gross national product, this is 1921, um, mm -hmm. uh, was 45.9 trillion. That's Europe and the U.S. alone. Mm -hmm. And when you look at then Japan, Australia, Korea, South Korea, countries that will align with the U.S. very easily um, if they are war. Uh, you are looking additional 8.3 trillion, right. which is 50.22 trillion dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, compare with Russia, which has only 2 trillion mm -hmm. and has been highly degraded uh, based on the war. Mm -hmm. And then China uh, has 18 trillion, which comes to about 20 trillion. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at sustain war, which we are watching in Ukraine and Russia. Mm -hmm. Ukraine, supported by Europe and the rest of the U.S. ally, is able to degrade constantly the capacity of Russia uh, to carry on mm -hmm. a major conventional war. Mm -hmm. If they don't use nuclear war, which then the, the West and the U, uh, U.S. will use it two times right. to just change this world the way it is. Mm -hmm. So moving from the, this kind of environment, the question is, there going to be a war between Russia and United States? Right. I, 
I have serious doubt that either one of them will attempt to use nuclear weapons. You've talked about Russia, and I just want us to talk about now Russia's influence. Yes, in that's where I'm going to. Right. Now, so what, 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 is, what is going to happen then? What is the stake for Africa? Mm -hmm. Africa is going to be the theater for proxy war. Right. Uh, where you have U.S. interests on, and Western Europe on one hand, and then Russian and Chinese on the other hand. Mm -hmm. It is playing in Sudan right now. Mm -hmm. It is going to play in the entire Sahel region because of the Francophone uh, legacy of having very, very poor governors by the time that these countries got independent. Mm -hmm. So Niger, uh, as one of those um, uh, zones which we are focusing on, it's one of the poorest countries in the world. Mm -hmm. And yet it's highly endowed with, the, with uranium. Right. 100%. So Russia interest mm -hmm. to is extract uranium mm -hmm. and extract gold and extract diamond. Mm -hmm. And so the same with the rest of the people. Mm -hmm. This at the stake in Africa, mm -hmm. which we need to really now explore. Yes, of course, when you talk about uranium, at least it's 7% in, uh, in uh, Niger, and it really produces nuclear. But I want us to go back to the Russia situation. Uh, there's been reports that the Wagner Group is actually involved in some of the activities, of course, in Niger. And the government on the other side, the Russia government, um, has actually said that the gov they need to restore peace in Niger. What do you think is the issue now here between the Russia government and the Wagner mercenaries? The Wagner mercenaries, as you have seen in Europe, mm -hmm. are some of the most awful uh, group of people. They're, they're really, really not legitimate military. Mm -hmm. Legitimate military as a code of conduct on how to, to perform in war, when to stop it, and when to start it, and all that kind of thing. These are, these are prisoners. They're mm -hmm. the worst of the worst, uh, which are now involved as expeditionary force for Putin mm -hmm. and his oligarchy. Right. They do not serve the best interest of Russia, and therefore they don't serve the best interest of Africa. They're here to extract. And therefore they are going to, um, as you can see among the Sahel region, is very volatile uh, because of the Islamist uh, that have been constantly attacking these countries. Mm -hmm. and also, they're very poor countries, as you can see. So they are the potential, um, the potential unit that will be attacked first uh, by this renegade uh, right. kind of troops. Mm -hmm. Now, so the issue then, at the same time, the U.S. are not sitting idle. They have over 1,000 troops mm -hmm. uh, stationed around this area. Right. Uh, so the U.S. is also fighting, and Europe is fighting for its interest. The question now becomes, what is the stake for Africa? Mm -hmm. uh, Africa can no longer look at uh, the UN and, and say, come and help us, yeah. we are fighting. Uh, because there's no unity in the UN, there's no unity in Security Council. Mm -hmm. So Security Council cannot function as a body, it is divided. And then US has its own interest, which is serving. Uh, the US have not have what I call gravitite in Africa, and I'm talking as, uh, as American Kenyan mm -hmm. uh, in terms of my um, affiliation. Right. Um, the U.S. after Second World War mm -hmm. and the Marshall Plan changed Yemen completely to where Yemen is right now. Right. They changed Japan after the Second World War. Mm -hmm. And if the U.S. is interested in African development, mm -hmm. they have the enough resources and the ability to be able mm -hmm. to help Niger in a most significant way mm -hmm. uh, through development mm -hmm. and, uh, and the cooperation, uh, realistic cooperation and investment with African countries. Let's talk about the people now in Niger. Uh, we had seen there was a bit of peaceful demonstration uh, with the citizens of Niger, but they were backing the coup. Why do you think this was the case? Is there no democracy in that country? Well, <laughs> democracy is elusive. Mm -hmm. uh, even elusive um, in America, uh, you can see Trump elusive in, in Russia completely. Mm -hmm. And in Africa, it's a real challenge. 
What is happening is the citizens are being moved through really powerful um, propaganda uh, by Wagner groups and everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, and then historical African, and this is something I've been arguing against constantly. Historical, the Soviet Union was a partner of the Africa in the struggle for independence. Mm -hmm. The current regime in Russia under Putin is not the Soviet Union. Uh, the nature of the Soviet Union committed uh, as a partner uh, to make sure that African was independent is not Putin uh, is interested in extraction mm -hmm. and taking, you know, um, taking goods out of Africa mm -hmm. under the pretext of creating the old Soviet Union. And so some Africans easily get swayed with this kind of argument. Mm -hmm. And you can see the division among African countries, instead of focusing as a unit uh, to take care of our business, they're divided. Mm -hmm. I want us to talk about now the mediation process that has been going on there. We know ECOWAS came in and they had even given some sanctions. But as of today, we had seen some West African delegation now even leaving Niger. I want us to talk about that situation. How do you think ECOWAS is handling the mediation process? What is happening uh, uh, for there? is really African has to put this house in order. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about the uh, regional, uh, regional force, like the East African regional force. Right. We are also talking about ECOWAS. We talk about Southern Africa. We are also talking about Northern Africa. This looking at the region. Mm -hmm. So what really need to happen, and, and the ECOWAS has attempt to do that, uh, to go in with mediation first and help the antagonist group come together mm -hmm. and then later on by force if it cannot work. Right. This is the only answer for Africa. Mm -hmm. If ECOWAS and, and Africa can create a really strong mediation force mm -hmm. beside Obusanjo, um, you are looking at people like Uguru Kenyatta. Right. They are looking at some of the um, retired presidents of the Africans that can come together on a constant basis, not just uh, on a standby, but on a constant basis, mediation, mm -hmm. uh, which is really needed uh, before you go in with the force. Right. Because the force is the final thing. You are mm -hmm. going in to be killed yes. or you are going to kill. Attack. And so what is happening is I think Nigeria is playing a very powerful role mm -hmm. uh, in the ECOWAS region. Mm -hmm. But Nigeria and ECOWAS cannot be left alone. Mm -hmm. AU has a role mm -hmm. and a significant role to play, mm -hmm. which is to galvanize the, the rest of the regions within Africa, mm -hmm. East Africa, South Africa, North Africa, yeah. have them to back ECOWAS. Uh, because this thing is not be, uh, going to be done by mediation only. Mm -hmm. It's gone very deep, and these folks are playing through their intelligence. They're playing a major, major role to dis disorganize. That's why Pogosian mm -hmm. uh, uh, is, um, is sending congratulatory note mm -hmm. uh, to, to the cool leader. Pogosian is not an angel. By, <laughs> by, by, by history, any, of course, yes. By any word. So we got mm -hmm. to get rid of Pugosian out of Africa. Mm -hmm. We got to get Wagner out of Africa yeah. and have legitimate relationship with Russia, mm -hmm. with legitimate diplomat and legitimate business people. Do you this, think, yeah. This is what must happen. Uh, do you think we're in Kenya? Do you think Kenya or East Africa, the East Africa EAC, have any role to play in terms of like mediation, or is it too far off from the regional politics? No, no. You, you know, when you, <laughs> here, here's the point. Um, let, let me say this. Um, yeah. I, I give statistic yes. of Europe, uh, America versus Russia. Mm -hmm. When you look at Africa, let's just talk about. Uh, what is the capacity of, of Africa? Mm -hmm. uh, Africa combined together as an average of $3.1 trillion mm -hmm. when you bring us all together. Yeah. Niger has $14.92 which is one of the poorest countries in the world. Mm -hmm. 
Right. We cannot have AU, and part of AU is falling apart, mm -hmm. and the rest of uh, East Africa or South Africa or North Africa is saying that's, that's not our region. Yeah. We cannot be involved. Mm -hmm. I call for AU to really create a highly sophisticated team team of diplomats, intervening uh, force, and then eventually yeah. uh, a powerful force that will support the region so that Nigeria and the rest of ECOWAS people mm -hmm. are not alone. Mm -hmm. We are highly integrated mm -hmm. system. This is the only answer for Africa. Mm -hmm. Everybody else have their own interest. Mm -hmm. I've said on this um, uh, KTN several yeah. times right. that Putin and, uh, and Joe Biden and uh, Xi Jinping does not go to bed and wake up in the morning thinking about children in Africa, in Africa. who went in without food. Mm -hmm. It is us, it is the African mm -hmm. that has to deal with that. Just to end this conversation on the Niger coup, I wanted to talk about military takeover. I mean, a lot of the times we've seen a lot of African countries, even now Sudan with what's mm -hmm. happening, there's a lot of military takeover. Do you think that's the way to go in Africa to make sure that things are streamlined in the right way? No, you, you know, 1989, uh, Chairman, uh, Chairman uh, Mao toured Africa, mm -hmm. and at the end, he said Africa was ripe for revolution. Right. What Chairman Mao was calling for is not people take spears and start uh, slicing each other or take guns and start killing each other. He said Africa need authentic thinking. Africa mm -hmm. need rethinking of who we are. Mm -hmm. uh, we need a cultural revolution. We need to change mindset in order to maintain stability in Africa. Mm -hmm. Africans didn't take that. Uh, because they were competing, those who want to be communist, those who want socialist, mm -hmm. those who want to be democratic. But if you look at the entire continent of Africa, mm -hmm. we have embraced the term democracy. And if we uh, embrace the term democracy, mm -hmm. then we need to be serious. The military does not belong in the government. They belong in the barracks. These folks are not trained. I, I have spent a lot of time with them, mm -hmm. and I have strong background in military strategy. Right. They're not trained to create peace. They're trained to kill. Mm -hmm. You know, and you can bring a killer uh, to manage a government where you need reflection and debate and time and thinking. Mm -hmm. You cannot. And therefore, they have not succeeded in Africa. Yeah. I started from West, Af West Africa spread all over Africa. Right. And apart from Paul Kagame, mm -hmm. uh, who really venture out into rational thinker and mm -hmm. uh, bringing the country together, none of them have succeeded. Mm -hmm. So the military, uh, Egyptians have been run by military for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is stability. Yeah. Uh, yes, there is growth. Yeah. But the issue is people have no say. They have no in, in what, what's it's happening. happening. So the military does not belong in the government. Right. They, they belong to the barracks. They belong to the barracks. Yes. Let's move on to another country now and talk about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is one of the countries that's really still in some sort of like turmoil politically also. There is reports that they're planning a state of emergency in the Amhara region. There's conflict between the local militia and the army there. What are your thoughts on that situation there? Well, I'm watching Ethiopia very closely. Mm -hmm. And my hope is that East Africa is soon or later is going to admit Somalia and going to admit uh, Ethiopia mm -hmm. as part of the greater East Africa region. Right. So that we can get them stronger and stronger. The issues in Ethiopia, uh, mm -hmm. they are historical. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the people were denied their right mm -hmm. uh, over the... Um, uh, the, the, the kings, the regime that has gone for years and years. Yeah. Most of the people were poor. Mm -hmm. And now as you come, you can see military, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, after, after military, you know, take over and tearing down an ethnic, mm -hmm. ethnic fighting, the Romans, liberation, uh, the Tigrinians, the, everybody, and, uh, and, and uh, splitting each other. So Ethiopia need to be watched. Mm -hmm. very closely. I, I was arguing against the U.S. policy earlier on right. that's, that say we're going to sanction them, you know, because they're fighting. Yeah. 
mm. Ethiopia um, and under under the new uh, president this president is very mm. proactive mm -hmm. okay he's mostly given opportunity yeah. will bring Ethiopian together right and provide the kind of um, uh, the kind of governance that is needed but you see the the interest of the the rest of the world are not there mm -hmm. uh, they're there to create trouble between Ethiopia and uh, and Egypt mm -hmm. uh, trouble within inside Ethiopia so that it can fight then right. they can have opportunity to mm -hmm. come in Ethiopia mm -hmm. growth um, projection mm -hmm. is moving in the right direction mm -hmm. much faster than than uh, than we had predicted earlier mm -hmm. but so you need to be nurtured mm -hmm. again you need africans you need diplomats you need the kind of work that uh, president uhuru was doing earlier mm -hmm. uh, need to be encouraged so that we can bring ethiopia together to work so that we can trade like we are doing right now mm -hmm. with ethiopia Finally, I want us to talk about now the humanitarian crisis because with conflict, there's a lot of humanitarian crisis, a lot of refugees, and there's even reports of cutting aid when it comes to this, uh, you know, refugee crisis. What are your thoughts on how to manage the humanitarian crisis, especially in Africa? Well, uh, here, here's um, uh, uh, my thinking. Uh, uh, we can no longer... Mm -hmm call the uh, the Somali refugees we have in Kenya. We can no longer call them refugees. Mm -hmm. We need to go to Dada camp and and just say, make a choice. Do you want to be a Kenyan or do you want to return uh, to Somalia? Right. And then let these people out of those camps such that they can make a choice. They want to stay here. They want to go to Uganda. They want to go to Tanzania. They want you know, so that this is their country and they can contribute significantly economically as we have seen, mm -hmm. particularly with the new migrants coming in. Yeah. But if we continue to contain these people mm -hmm. um, like, like in a work camp, um, first we can feed them, we can support them, we're looking for international community to do that. International community are fighting, mm -hmm. Euro Europe is fighting. That's yeah. their bio, uh, primary priority. Yeah. They're not going to support Africa the way they need to. America will not do the same thing. Mm -hmm. and then it will turn to Africa, and yeah. Africans will begin picking on each other. So yeah. let's change the concept of who is the refugees, you mm -hmm. know, and then begin to look at um, contribution of these people mm -hmm. and giving them a choice. Mm -hmm. They want to stay in Africa, they want to go to Europe, they want to go to America, wherever. Mm -hmm. But they have a real choice. Right. Very that interesting. That is yeah. where I'm coming from. Interesting.